In this lab, we are going to graph a nuclear decay series. So what we're going to do is you're going to need your periodic table out, and I'm going to take you through a couple of them, and then I'll show you the answer at the end, and we'll set up the graph and see how you do. So uh, the first thing we need is the periodic table, because we need to get the atomic numbers for these, because we don't have these memorized. These bigger elements, we rarely use them. And so here's my first element, starting with uranium-238-92. Uh, uh, and then they're telling me it's going to do alpha decay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw that transmutation right here. So this is partially done for you. So first I start out by drawing the uranium-238 with a 92 on bottom, and then I draw the arrow. Now it does alpha decay, so what that means is it gives off an alpha particle. If you don't know where to find the alpha particle, it is going to be... on table O in your reference table. So you'd go to alpha and then it can either be 42HE or it could be 42 with the alpha symbol. It doesn't matter which symbol you use, but the 42 is kind of a must. All right, and that's all you do. So there's my alpha 42HE and then it's gonna turn into a blank. And the way we're gonna solve the blank is real simple. We, we always consider the, or we always assume that the arrow is the great equal sign in a chemical equation. And all of the top numbers on the left and right have to be equal, and all of the bottom numbers on the left and right have to be equal. So the reason this works out, the reason it's 234 over here, is because 4 plus 234 is 238. And so the bottom number, if you haven't figured it out, is going to be 2 plus something, and it's got to equal nine, uh, 92. So we get 90. Once I know that it's 90, that tells me that it's thorium. I'll do one with you so that you can, from scratch, so that you can see how it works. You take that thorium and you pull it down here, and now it does the next decay. So thorium is atomic number. That's why we do labs in pencil. It's atomic number 90. And it's going to do a beta gamma decay. So the same thing. You're going to write thorium 234 and 90. It's going to turn into a beta, a gamma, and a blank. So the beta's numbers, the beta numbers, if I look them up on the uh, table below, is going to be 0, minus 1. You could use the E or the beta symbol. Uh, that's the gamma symbol. It's 0, 0 for the numbers. And then we got to solve for the blank. So remember, the arrow is your equal sign. So the entire left side, there's only one thing, has to equal the entire right side. So 234 equals 0 plus 0 plus x. So in this case, x has to be 234. Now let's do the bottom numbers. 90 on the left, so I have negative 1 plus 0 plus x. So when you do your math, you should get 91. And then element 91 is PA. So now what I would do is I would take this PA and I'd pull it down here. So 2, 30, 4, 91, PA. And now this is telling me I have to do beta and gamma again. So I started over here. 2, 30, 4, 91, PA, arrow. And then I do a beta. I'll use a different symbol. 0 minus 1 E. Doesn't matter which one you use. And 0, 0, gamma. As long as the numbers are the same. Plus blank. And then what you have to do is solve for the blank. So we're going to do the exact same thing that we did. 234 equals 0 plus 0 plus blank. Or X, whatever you want to call it. And then do the bottom numbers. 91 equals negative 1 plus 0 plus blank. Once you identify the bottom number, that tells you the symbol. You take that number here, pull it down here, and you do it again. And so you're just going to keep doing this process until you get down to this number right here, 20682 PB. Once you hit that, you are stable. In other words, the, um, the radioactive nuclei stop being radioactive. They stop giving off these types of radia uh, radiation, so a stable atom is just, just going to sit there and be a stable atom. It doesn't do anything once it's stable. All right, and that's what we're going to do now. Be careful with your numbers, because if you make any mistakes up here, those mistakes are going to follow you all the way through, and you'll notice, you'll know you made a mistake because you didn't hit this. So if that happens, what you have to do is just be careful. If you if the mistake is in the uh, is in the mass number, but the atomic number is right, that's not bad. You should, that what that means is your symbols for your elements are all fine, and your atomic numbers for your elements are fine. It's just that they're mass numbers are wrong. If your mass number is right, but your atomic number wrong is wrong, that means you have to go back and erase 
all the, you have to find your mistake and then erase all the symbols and atomic numbers from that point on. And if both of the numbers are wrong, you got to find your mistake and basically start over from that point because you made it, typically you made an adding or subtracting mistake. And that's how you do this lab. Now, if we go to the back, we're going to graph them. So the way the graph is going to work, it's pretty simple. We're going to have atomic number, uh, sorry, atomic mass on the Y, and it says 206 to 238, and then there's a little page break in there. So the page break means we can start at zero, the break means we skipped a bunch of numbers, and then we start at 206, and then on the X, you're going to have atomic number, um, every other box, you're going to go up by one. So we put a page break in, so we can start at 82, so it's going to go zero to 82 real quick, and then every other box is going to be worth one until you get to 92. And here's what you do. Here's what you're going to do. You're going to graph these elements right here. So you're going to graph these guys straight down. And then you're going to use the decay mode that they did, that they had to do to get to that next um, stage uh, to color in the line. So I'm going to do a few with you and then you'll see what I mean. So the first element is 23892U. So you go to 238, you go to 92, and you put a dot. And then you label it. And now, the next one down is 234, 90 thorium. So let's go to 234 and 90. Put a dot. And label it. And again, you don't really need the atomic number for these. Now, this connection, since I had to do an alpha decay to get to thorium, that section is going to be red. So, that section of the line is red. Now, the next one is going to be 234-91-PA. So then I'm going to graph that. And then since, if we look at it, to get from thorium to PA, it had to do a beta decay, right? Then that's going to be blue. Gamma we ignore, basically, because gamma is zero, 0, It doesn't really change things. So that one's going to be blue. So... That one's blue. Now the next one, I'll do one more with you. The next one, if we do the math on this, should be 2, 30, 4, 90, 2, which is uranium, and then we draw it down here. And when we label it, it's going to be right here. this one was PA okay and since in that instance we did another beta gamma we ignore the gamma right mathematically it doesn't count that's going to be blue beta blue alpha red so then this next segment is going to be colored blue as well now, if you notice, a lot of people would say that, would look at this and say, wait, I started with you and now I'm back to you. But the thing to notice is that you're not back to the exact same uranium that you started with. You started with a uranium that had uh, more neutrons, four more neutrons, and now you're, at, you're, you're with a uranium that has four less neutrons than you started with. So what's happening is the P to N ratio is changing ever so slightly with each cycle and is slowly getting to a more stable ratio. And they don't, when they, when they become stable, they end up down here. And when we get to this guy, that means there's no more radiation being given off because the P to N ratio has finally hit a number that's stable. Now, normally in class, we say the magic ratio is one to one, but when the atoms get exceptionally large, like these bigger atoms, 
they tend to need more like 1.5 to 1 or something like that. So as the atoms get bigger and bigger and bigger, they actually need slightly more neutrons over time in order to really be stable. So the first 20 elements on the periodic table, the 1 to 1 rule works every time. But once you get bigger than element 20, which is calcium, then they start to creep up and need a little bit more. And eventually they need a whole lot more uh, neutrons like, the, like you see here. But one to one is good most of the time, but not always. And so that's all you're going to do. Once you have the, the graph done, you're going to answer the questions. It's going to be much easier to do the questions after the graph is done. And then just keep in mind, your graph is going to zigzag. I don't know the exact one, but it's probably going to look something like this. There may not be, there may be an extra one here, or I may have missed one, but it's going to look something like that when you're done. And then down here, I don't know exactly where it's going to be, is going to be your PB, well, it would be right here, 20682. So there's your PB 206, which you're eventually going to hit. And then you're just going to do the coloring and make sure everything's labeled. And that concludes this lab.